And I'm also, also now recording. So thank you for the reminder. Val, let me let me know if you can hear us or hold on guys. What we bring yeah, yeah, what's up, dude? First try. Hell yeah. Yeah, getting better at this. Dude, is it, Val, is your voice still gone? Dude, my I sound like Darth Vader right now, man. <laughs> I'm I, good. I seriously sound like a different person. Bro, how you been? Man? That's why I use the microphone. God, finally, bro. I was about to slap you last, uh, a couple of <sighs> five tries. What's going on, guys? Dude, feeling good, man. I was talking about the I was talking about how fun the meetup was, and I was I was giving a shout out to our young crew, dude. Freaking Samuel and all the boys, dude, getting an Airbnb together, being the most hungry dudes possible to learn this shit. You imagine, man, if we had something like this when we were growing up. Now, I was literally telling the members, I was like, dude, I was blacking out on park benches off Jose Cuervo at 20 years old. These guys are fucking speaking at meetups and they already know how to trade at 20 <laughs> years old. Dude. I'm, still, I'm still doing that, but with better alcohol, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're blacking out on park benches, but you can trade your ass off. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. So, so what's going on? I wanted to, uh, now it's time for you guys to ask your questions. So now we got Bao on, uh, we got myself. Guys, hit us with all the questions and topics you want to talk about today. Like, what do you, what's hindering your process? Um, what do you need help with? We can show some examples. This is a really good time to ask questions, both on YouTube and uh, both in the um, webinars channel if you're a current member. Awesome, man. Guys, thank you for the love, man. It was yeah, a you lot see, uh, you see uh, Ergo? Godspeed, man, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Holy crap, right? Now, where'd you post that? Did you post that now after hours or did he? In Maine. Well, he in posted Maine? after hours, but then we reposted it in Maine. <laughs> I love how someone did this already. That's hysterical. That's Elon Musk taking it to the moon, baby. Look at this, guys. This is, oh my God, this guy, Mount Kilimanjaro, dude. Are you kidding me? That is the coolest. Dude, it's so sick, dude. That so is cool. insane. Look at this view, dude. This is not Photoshop. Are you kidding me right now? This is the power of the community, man. If you guys want to hike, you, now you have a hiking tab. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, how amazing is that? That is the coolest, man. But God, that's cool. Next uh, adventure here. Yeah, this is this is definitely we're, we're gonna need Elon Musk help with that one, man. I think I think I think I I I've always wondered about because like Elon Musk has teased for two years now that he's going to actually put a Dogecoin flag on the moon. I'm like, if that fucker puts a Dogecoin flag on the moon, moon and that coin doesn't pump, man, it's dead forever. Yeah. Hey, happy to help her, bro. Happy to help, buddy. You don't want to mess with that stuff. Stick to stocks. <laughs> Val, got, got our first question. Can you recommend a decent free paper trading simulator for use in the UK to test drive strategies, think or swim not accessible for UK members. I know you definitely have some strong I, I think, on a simulator. I think Cobra had some. I think Cobra had some free one, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not a hundred percent just with international stuff like that, but what I can tell you, Roberto, is I'm I'm almost guaranteed. I, look, I don't use it, so I don't know, but I'm almost a hundred percent that DosTrader.com does. It, there's no restrictions to anywhere to download because right. it's just it's not linked to a real account. And we don't have an affiliation. It's just what I've heard other members say they like. So maybe maybe Google that. Maybe check that out to start, man. Yeah, DOS, DOS is what um, the platform that gives up the free ones. Yeah, and, and guys, just to not get this confused with anything else, if we, go to, um, if we go to chart recaps and fills, what you would be getting a simulator on is this, a real platform that all of us traders use, but you can practice on a real platform. So if you have to pay for it, sometimes it's worth the money just to pay so you can get a real feel, right? So, so um, take a look at the, what, what, what we just posted uh, in the webinar. Oh, right here? Yep, cool. yep. Start a 14-day paper trading trial. Let me click this link and show you. Oh, cool. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, that's probably the way to go, guys, because if you get used to that, obviously not the fake fills that a paper account does, but if you get used to the platform, then once you want real money and you go to something like Cobra, it's going to be such a smooth transition versus doing a paper account on TD Ameritrade, and then you don't know shit about DOS. So yeah, I, I recommend that. Yep. So uh, screenshot this link. Uh, well, maybe you could, where else can you, you can post it? I guess, are you, is, is he not a member or is he a member? Uh, that was a member. That was a member. That was for Roberto. Okay. Yeah. okay. So Roberto, definitely check that out, buddy. Yeah, they, 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 they copy and paste that link. 
All right, question number two. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Davis said, can you guys go over the morning watch list part again? Yeah, Davis, let me show you real quick. So every single day, for those who have missed, guys, Alex puts together a really detailed watch list. So like what was on scans today was AMC, obviously, is a low hanger. BFRI, obviously, is a day two low hanger. Uh, you know, there's OLB, like, oops, sorry, OLB, not OLD. This was a day one play. Um, and then AV, ARVL and then MDJH. So every single day, like Alex is, well, the team, but specifically Alex is putting this together so that you never have to go in blind. This is so we can be prepared as a team, as a group, as a club, and specifically just you as an individual, because Alex has been trading for nearly a decade, guys. You have to understand that when he puts something on there and the lines of the lines, those are the lines. And if he doesn't want to mess with a short, that might be a good long opportunity. So you can also reverse and <coughs> what's talked about in that list. Does that make sense? Uh, I hope that answers your question, buddy. Uh, let's see. Please discuss a bear market rebound. <coughs> now you're you're probably the king of this, man. You've been seeing twenty years of this stuff. A bear market rebound. Well, what, what, what's the question? <laughs> well, yeah. What's is there a specific question you have in that, Chewy, or just bear market rebound? What does that even mean? You're talking about big caps, obviously. Like everybody thought. The bear yeah, market. we had a bear market for three days. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously, I mean, I think like here's the thing, man, it's, I'll just keep it very simple with like a bear market in big caps is when they're talking about raising interest rates and, you know, they're not money printing anymore and throwing it in the market. These are reasons why something would go down, right? Like this is the reason why the market would at least just, if you equate it to a balloon, it just lets some air out of the balloon, not necessarily pop and go to a market crash like 2008, but everybody was freaking out from 480 to when this hit 420 thinking the sky was going to fall. Look, the interest rates weren't that bad. They're barely bringing them on yet. They kind of tease that. This was a little bit of the news with Russia and Putin and Ukraine and stuff. So, I mean, look, the, the end of the world didn't happen and people realize that. Now we're a back to a bull market. Like, it's. It, Wait, what is, the, what is the question, though? Well, he just said, please discuss. So, there's nothing specific about it. This is a guy from YouTube? Yeah, a guy from YouTube. Obviously. <laughs> so. Yeah. People are too worried about what's a bear, what's who cares if it's a bull or bear. It's the same yeah. thing, right? line to line. I could care less if you're in a bull or a bear. It's the same type of process that we trade off. So stop focusing on what's a bear, what's a bull. Focus on the strategies that make you money. Yep. Yeah, guys, that's more of a question for like if you're truly like a long term investor, which then you can pay more attention to that. But guys, if you're a day trader, it's a watch list. It, like this is your bull and bear market right here every day. It's just line to line. What are the patterns? What are the what are the patterns that we teach? You know, if I go back to the sheet that I showed you guys earlier, what is the first bounce? What's the first like? Are these in play? Not is Jerome Powell printing money? Like who gives a shit, right? Like is the death line short viable today? Is there a death line play? Is there a low hanging fruit play? You know, like like this is your guide every day. Who cares about a bull or bear market? If you have volatility, you have opportunity. It's as simple as that. So you don't have to worry about this stuff unless you're building like a retirement account. I get that's a different story. That's a completely different subject. Um, let's see. Next question. How does a trader under PDT start out? What's the best strategy? Is it still shorting small caps? The number one strategy for that situation. Great question. Now you want well, to tackle that one? Well, a couple of things, guys. Are you pattern day trader or not, right? If you're overseas, you have the... You, you can keep trading with trade zero and doesn't have to stop by three trades a week. The only thing that's topping the pattern day trader is the three trades a week. So you can choose to go short if you want using the Venom product, as long as you find a locate or IB, if you find a locate, um, you're restricted to three. So if, if you like to short, then short three times a week. If you like to go long, do the first bounce three times a week. In and out. The key is if you're under pattern day trader, don't fucking pray. Don't hold and pray. Get make your money and exit. Make your money and exit. Make your money and exit. Exactly. Or you can split up your account into multiple accounts to get more trades. So you have five thousand dollar account. Why don't you have two twenty five hundred dollar accounts? So you have now six trades a week. I love that. And guys, remember options and swing trading are like the deterrent to a PDT account, right? Like when I had. $8,000 in my account when I was 22 years old versus like 31 now or whatever it was 24. 
is I, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I still had kind of common sense. And I built an account doing the first bounce and also a combination of on really strong stocks and a combination of swing trading because I had three trades a week, in my TD Ameritrade account. And then I split up that money into 3K E-Trade, 3K TD Ameritrade and like 3K Fidelity. So then I had nine trades. And then I would still do a little bit of swing trading if I had a really good first bounce average. Back then, I didn't know what a stop was. I wish I did. Now I do, which I'd implement. But there are ways to get around it and specifically on options. Or you do options. I have a lot of friends that do okay. options with a large cap room. But with a $1,000 account, he made like three, 400 bucks a day. So Yeah, seriously, man. Like options is like the cheat code to PDT. So if you guys are asking, what's the cheat code behind PDT? It's even if you have a small account, I think the answer is options. Truly, that's what I recommend. Truly. And we teach that. We teach that. Right. So it doesn't hurt till you try it. it do, exactly. And you're not even going to know if you like it till you try, right? Um, with interactive brokers, if you deposit the minimum amount, you can pay for trade with live data. Oh, Addy B, thank you for that information for our guys. Um, uh, let's see. Some guy said, I missed Wish this morning and a few other first red day because I was lasered in on HLBZ short. I can't multitask yet. That's my struggle. So there's no question in there, Edward Taliz, but... But yeah, man, like you do, dude, dude, Val earned his reputation and Alex earned, or I earned knowing how to trade six tickers at once. If you're just lasered on to one at a time, man, I mean, that's just, that's how everyone starts. You can't well, look what you that. did, man. Look what you did. You gave up the easy winner to tackle a first day mover. HLBZ. Yeah. So what are you doing? Right. Focus on the multi-day breakdown plays, a little hanging fruit stuff. Avoid the first day shiny object. Yep. Yep. So you, should not, I, you should never ever pass up a day two play, a day three play for a day one shorting front side. And specifically if it's your only play, like if you can't multitask yet, Edward, Val is 100%. You need to go for the easiest one possible because if you get locked on it or like, like you're locked on it like a pit bull, you know you're going to miss out on opportunity costs elsewhere. So that's a really good point. If you can multitask and do them all, that's a different story, right? Because Val can do that. Val can trade eight stocks at one time and then still have fantasy orders out there and eat a Subway sandwich. It's like, dude's not human, man. He's got clones. What you got to do is got on the ones that are the easiest plays, not the shiniest object. Definitely. The one you're going to make money on for sure. Um, next question, or at least statement. While you have the chart of BFRI, okay, I can bring that up, um, BFRI, while we have this chart, uh, let's see, I was up on the position but got stuck around zombie hour, how do I avoid this the next time I should cover some after the first 30 minutes of the day? Well, you know your answer, bro. I, I, bro, you just answered it. <laughs> You're telling to tell us, how do you stop being a dumbass? Stop being a dumbass. Well, and it's like, and it's like, Nicholas, you literally just said that's but it's like, you don't go to a doctor, then you go, doctor, my hand, my arm hurts like this when I reach out like this. Don't reach out like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, you know, you know what you're doing wrong, bro. Like, you, you know, it's like, it's how I stop myself from, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it. But <laughs> oh, dude, don't say it. You know, in the blanks, man, there's a lot of discipline things. This is what you get a tab. This is what you put an alarm. Maybe you have, maybe you set a bunch of like alarms, like at 10, 20, uh, 10 20 20 20 all the way 10 30 make sure you get the hell out you do whatever it takes because you know your problem guys you know put a hard stop maybe after zombie hour put a hard stop in so if you want to cheat and you want to break the zombie rules put a hard stop in so at least like you it forces you out yeah man shit draw a line dude make it visual i am not going to hold a position or open up a new position past the first hour like, put a, like put a, put sta staple some shit to your, I mean, tape some stuff to your monitor. Do whatever it takes, man. Yeah. This is a disciplinary problem. When we're, we're not your parents, unfortunately. You know, if I was your parent, I'd ground you. But you know, you sneak out the bedroom window anyways. You know? so, You're grounded for not <laughs> covering my zombie hour. <laughs> so, like I said, man, when the zombie hour comes, put a hard stop in. I think that's the best way to do it. Then, then you can go screw around, but then the hard stop will take you out. Definitely. Okay, I think we have a member question now. I hope we didn't miss any, but. What are some of the bad habits you saw rewarded in 2020 that people aren't getting away with anymore, Travers? That was, I like, that, I like that question. Come to mind? Specifically? That's a very good question. Well, let me put in some bad covers. 
<laughs> Travers, I assume you mean more 2021 though, right? Like last year? Or uh, like uh, specifically 2020? Let me answer that. Hold on. That's a good question. So the market has been a bull trending up by the, by the dip, by the dip, by the dip works, right? If you screwed up, you kept on buying more long, eventually it'll go back up. Those ha- bad bet- those bad habits may catch up to you when the market stop going up. Imagine if the market is at the top right now. Yep. It doesn't work anymore. So the bad habits is keep keep assuming that you get bailed out. You have to use proper risk management. So those are the risk management is what's going to bite people in the ass ongoing in a tough market cycle. Bell, I'm so glad you said that because I was actually going to say the exact same thing. I was actually going to say, I don't know about small caps specifically, Travers, about those exact years, but I was going to say people who do day trading in big caps, everybody thought they had a 12 inch dick dude right here but now it's like they don't know right like there's some there's some serious momentum drop like obviously there's things that can hinder the market like dude this was you could buy anything in big caps and make money right so people got a really really false sense of confidence or even just bad habits like they'll never lose and there might be a rude awakening for guys that are not long-term investors and are still just buying all the dips for a day trade in something like spy or something like tesla for god's sakes we've seen a lot of traders really kind of blow up on tesla this year or it's last year same thing with crypto right people say i just buy crypto forget about it it'll never go down definitely i mean here's a here's an example there right gbtc guys this is the crypto chart for this is literally the bitcoin chart guys but in stock form because this is an index and a trust that follows bitcoin the price of bitcoin dude look at these look, everybody thought they couldn't lose right but then what happens like reality sinks in dude bell perfect example man i love that yeah i mean we actually guys the, the, most of the problems i'll bite your ass is risk management so keep your risk management in check i can't remember who this was at the meetup i don't think he was a member but he did say something and i, I really i wish i remember this guy's name and we talked about it for a second he said i'm not going to single him out even if i did know his name but he goes dude Every dip that Bitcoin does, I, I buy it. I've sold like my house. I sell all my stocks. Like I, I literally every single dip in a grayscale, which this is GBTC and Bitcoin. I'm like, look, man, like I love your passion. I love your conviction, but just make sure you know what you're doing, man. I mean, sometimes dips don't bounce back in some fields or at least not for a very long time. So just be careful, guys. Like you got to know how markets move. And I think Travers, to answer your question, you the, I think you, that's what it was. If you do the same thing over and over and over, eventually it doesn't work anymore because people catch on. Algos catch on. It'll change it. Yeah. I mean, think about all the guys um, right before COVID hit, guys. Think about all the people that were long the spy for years and years and years, and then and then it just imploded. Now, who could have predicted, you know, the biggest bull run we've ever seen since COVID? But my God, like, think about the investors right here from SPY, which is in arguably the safest investment, you know, in the market. And it looked 340 at 218, people were jumping out of windows until it, until it doesn't work, right? This is what Val was saying. Um, let's see. Oh, I think Alex already answered this, but um, I guess we could probably throw our opinion in there. Oh, thanks, Alex, for the link. How does a beginner know if it's a day one, day two, or day three? Is day one the first day the chart is breaking down? That's actually a really good question if you know nothing. So... Let's go to BFRI, guys, right? Oops, sorry. Hold on, let me go to the two-day. What, what does this look like to you guys? Like, what does this look? It's a day two. It's a day two, right? Because this chart is really doing nothing. You don't include a day where there's no volatility, right? Even to have some movement. This is not a day. It's not a day trading day. This is the first day a stock is up with volume and a catalyst. There's a reason why this stock did this. So BFRI is a day two. It's the next day and a continuation play if you want to talk about trend going down. But this is day one. You know what I mean? Val, what was the what was the other day one on the watch list? It was um was it OLB? OLB is day one. Yeah, OLB. Yeah, yeah. This this is day one. Look, it's doing nothing, right? Like, like look at the previous day. Like it's literally doing nothing. And then boom, it's up pre-market. It's up a good percentage. People are now it's on their radars, it's on their scans. This is something of interest now. That's a day one play. This is now in play. And tradable with volume. Because when I was new, man, I couldn't figure that out for the first week I was trading. I was like, everybody's talking about day one, day two. Now I remember eight years ago, I was following you on Twitter and I was like, 
God, there, I was uh, talking about day two. Yeah, what the fuck is that? There, there's a concept of a day zero too. So if you take a look at a, if you take a look at BFRI, there was a day zero the day before. It, it was inching up. So you really don't count those as the first one. Those are not obvious. Those are the days that the people, insider people, insider information people try to. Volumes your guide, guys. Volume. Yeah. Day zero. I love that. Because you can kind of get like a wind of it, right? Like if I expand this to a 20 day, you can just tell like there's a little like what is this little inch up for a second. But this is not a major catalyst day, which traders know about because this is not really going to hit your scans, right? As you guys can see, it's just tick, tick, tick. Like it's not really it's not tradable. This is a tradable day. Does that make sense? But yeah, Bao's totally right about the day zero, man. There's, there's hints. There's clues. Sometimes. Um, let's go back. Where are we at? Yep. So that hopefully that answered your question on the years. I'm struggling to make my winners bigger than my losers. I find myself in 10 or 20% um, and win, but lose 30%. Any advice or tips would be appreciated. Thank you, Brandon. Member. Well, I'll, first of all, remember what I said, before you get into a, to a trade, you have to make a plan, right? Do the math. Where you, The plan includes what? Where you're going to enter, where you're going to exit for both the winner and the loss. You've already done your math before, and how can you get into this situation? It looks like, Brandon, you're winging it. You're making, you're making trades on the fly. You have not pre-planned your trades. You have not predetermined your risks. Yeah, I I like I always like the the risk to reward ratio. Sometimes guys on this, it's like if you're you know always taking a one to one or even a one to three. I mean, of course your losers are going to be bigger, and maybe you hold them longer. Maybe you don't do hard stocks. But as Bal just said, when you pre-plan, you say I really can risk twenty cents here to make eighty cents. That's a big deal, right? That's a four to one, not a one to four. So like, are you guys you know chasing? That's always doing revenge trading, not holding a winner. These are all things that are baked into that. And then, of course, like it's like, okay, I'm green. I'm going to take immediately. Sometimes you actually have to let a winner like ride a little bit, like for God's sakes, because when you let a loser ride, now you're just, that's not pre planned. You're just adding to a loser. And of course, it's going to be a bigger percentage. You, you're, okay, Brandon, you're going to have to pull up some charts and I guess submit some charts for the Saturday session because it, uh, we, this is a very generic question. We, there's right so much details in what you're trying to do because it seems like you, you want to. First of all, your entries may be wrong, or your stop could be too far out, or your size could be messed up. So there's a lot of there's your question is you know it's it's very ambiguous. It's very difficult to, to figure out what you're doing wrong. It could be a sizing problem, it could be a stopping problem, it could be entry problem, it could be an exit problem. Yeah, there's so many ways to fix that. There, yeah, like David just said, there's so many variables associated with that question. And like, I'll show you one. It's like, let's go to watch this today. Why don't you bring up a, uh, why don't you post one of your trades? And then we'll go through it quickly. You know? Yeah, definitely post them, post them. So, so really quick, I'm going to give you an example of the watch list there, buddy, real quick. Um, so check this out, Brandon. Uh, Alex wanted, so as you can see this, right, in AMC, Alex wanted 1750. So if you draw, the, actually, if I bring up the pivot point, you'll see why, of course. Uh, but if we draw an exact line at 1750, right, uh, let's say right, like right there, it didn't get to it. So if you're chasing here when it doesn't get to your line, that's changing a plan. So if you're adding by the time you want to actually get a starter, of course, you're going to cut it here and it might be 30% versus waiting for this. And then it drops because it's such a better, yeah, risk or reward. I'm not obsessed with that terminology, but it's a great risk or reward, but it's patience. You're always confident on your entry versus your exit. Your exits are always going to be a little sporadic. I mean, I'm, me and Bao, Alex are still fixing our exits, but you can make your entries precise, man. So like, that's another thing, right? It's like, if it didn't hit 1750, maybe you don't trade AMC because that's your original plan. You don't adjust and adjust and adjust and adjust on the fly. Oh, okay. He's going to post his TKLF. Good. Please do. Yeah, let's go. Let's critique one. Patience is a huge part of that variable, man. Huge. For when you're in the money and just waiting to get in. All right, let's see if he put. All right, we'll come back to you, Brandon. When you do post that, buddy, we'll come back to it. Um, let's see. Chano said, if you plan to scale, sometimes only your starter pays uh, because the other bullets don't hit whenever you scale to the top and get your stop losses on full size. Well, guys, that's why. Um, you, that's why we only do 30% over VWAP. So that's why you have to really ca be careful upon where you're sizing based on where trend is. 
if you're shorting up here and a stock is, you know, over VWAP and strong, I mean, you don't want to use 100% your size, right? You only want to use a certain uh, percentage that's going to keep you in the game and safe. Alex learned that a long time ago from a really big edge from teacher. Like that's a really good uh, lesson to learn. You can hit harder when this thing is broken down in VWAP or a low hanger, right? Uh, let's go to YouTube. I think we put, thank you, Addy B for helping us on YouTube, man. That's awesome. I love this. He's answering questions for us. Oh shit. There's so much commentary. I'm trying to find the questions. Let's see. Where did we stop off? One shot, one kill. That's Addy B. Do, do, do. Your last few comments of the past few weeks. Low hanging fruit and first. Um, oh, uh, someone asked about, this is just personally for you. Do you still trade OTCs or not anymore? If you want to answer that. I think value getting a corn dog. His his Uber eats just shut up. Uh, guys, I'm trying to find it. What? Oh, did you lose me? Oh, you guys lost me for a second. Lost you. What's up? Oh, 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 oh! I was asking you. I, I thought we lost you. Um, someone asked about do you still trade OTCs or not anymore? You don't see me post a single chart on it, do you? <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's dead. It's dead. They're just not around anymore, man. So there's that. There might be a place, but I don't trade it because uh, the liquidity is not there. I don't have the right brokers to trade it. And I, I don't touch the OTCs anymore. I have a $1,000 account. I find it hard to scale because of my small size. What's the key to building up? I find myself being scared to one shot, one kill. How do I overcome it? I you don't need to scale, guys. Know where you want to get enter. You'd rather miss the trade than be early, right? So one shot, one kill when you have a small account works perfectly fine. Yep. Make sure that you want, make sure that the entry you have is pretty much perfect. Don't, don't get FOMO. The moment you get FOMO, you're dead. Two, two options, Timothy Tan, who just asked that question. Number one, if it doesn't hit the 1750 line, you have a small account. You can only do maybe one starter or two bullets. You got to wait for that line or you don't trade. You don't hit it down. You like, you wait for your plan, the perfect entry or number two, we had a guy turn $1,300 into $70,000 with our options course. Small accounts are much, much more efficient if you go the options route. So I wouldn't say worry about scaling in small caps yet until you build that account, to be honest. I think you should start on, on options. Uh, let's see. If you trade right, guys, I don't have to worry about anything, right? But the problem is we don't know what to enter, what to exit. So what happens a lot of time, human emotions get us to have FOMO. We enter earlier than we think. Yep. Okay. You have to be okay with missing the trade. TKLF Brandon just posted um, TKLF. What's the, what is the question? Well, yeah. What was the question earlier? Um, Looks like you made money. I know. I was going to say, I don't think this is, <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you were going to post a loser. Definitely looks like you made money. <laughs> Question is, how do you hold longer? That's, a, that's up to you, man. <laughs> you're, if that was your plan and you stuck with your plan, that's fine. You did, you know, you, you covered that VWAP. You thought this thing was going to go higher. Most people did think it's going to go higher, then it went down. Nothing you can do about it. The next time you, you plan better, that's it. This yep. trade to me looks okay because your plan was to cover and you covered and you, you, you reshorted that the resistance and you covered the VWAP because you were scared that it might pop up. Yeah. And just because you have deadwood on the table doesn't mean we all don't always have deadwood. You're not going to capture the top and the bottom. Very few people do. So next time, create a better plan and put a hard stop and then let, let your winners write down if you like. Or yep. cover only half and then hold half. Yep. I love that. That's one of the cool things about hard stops, guys, is if you make money on the first trade, so you short right here and then make money, the next trade you take right here, you can go, look, I'm going to cut it for break even with a hard stop because I'm not going to lose any more money. I've already made the money of cushion, or I'm going to set it down for low fantasy covers and see if I get it. You're playing with very, very strict rules and a very strict P&L like kind of code with these with these hard stops that you like when you hit that first trade that makes you some money i'm not saying go be ballsy but you can be a little bit more confident if your hard stop is set to risk break even versus getting those covers that you want and that can arguably build the muscle of holding a winner longer because it is a muscle right it is a muscle 
Um, do you recommend clearing the chart of all indicators except VWAP and support and resistance lines, keeping the chart clean of EMAs, et cetera? Oh, yeah. Well, it depends. If EMAs make you money. If EMAs make you money, leave it. Leave what is on the screen that makes you money. The rest of the shit is just trying to impress people how smart you are. It turns out the more shit you have on there, the dumber you are. Yep. And you can also break it apart, Fox and Bear. So, like, person who asked this question. So, like, this is all we use for day trading for the most part. Arguably, if you want to put the pivot points because it's a day two. But if I'm doing, like, a really big cap long swing, I'm going to do RSI. It's the only indicator I like because here's what I'll do. Like, you can even see it kind of coalesce with, like, let's go to the spy chart on this recent dip. I loaded the boat right here. When this dipped on SPY, I have like a 422 average in a couple accounts because look, the RSI was super oversold that day in that moment. And I like SPY. Like that was something that I that I caught really nicely and I still actually have. So again, like it, it depends on what you're going after. Big caps, long-term swings versus day trading. It's very different. But you like Bao said, man, if it makes you money, keep it for God's sakes. Yeah. But keep it simple. Like don't overthink it. Do what works. You remember guys, you can have multiple charts up. You don't have to have one. You know, one with nothing on it, one with something on it, someone th one with more things on it. Bo, didn't you trade for like 10 years and didn't even know VWAP was a thing? Like you didn't even have VWAP on your charts for yeah, God's sake. No, no one told me VWAP was a thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, you were able to do it completely blind. <laughs> like think about that. Oh my God. That's crazy. Remember That's crazy. guys, you guys keep thinking that you have to put everything in one chart, man. You have five charts you want on one ticker. Yeah. Yeah, so what you can do, guys, just to give you kind of like help there, like if you wanted to do, um, like just say spies the chart, you could do spy in every single one. Obviously, it's going to be different because I haven't input styles or anything. But dude, you could do like, I swear to God, man, if you say this is OLB this morning, you could put a 15 minute chart for trend, you could put a three minute chart for death candles, you could put a one, it's a lot, but if it helps you and you could put EMAs, you could put RSI, put whatever you want. Split up your charts, man. Multiple charts, nothing wrong with multiple charts, multiple time frame, do whatever you want. Even multiple execution um, execution units on DOS, guys, if you want to like be really quick through with your fantasy orders and your stops, you can open up multiple montages. Like there's really ways to um, keep you agile. HLBZ volume starting to ramp, let's take a look. Yep, it's coming in a little bit. I hate charts like this that just seem bottom out and they're just really, I just, you can't milk too much out of this chart on the short side, man. I just, I can't stand charts like this for day trading. How could, um, this is a good question actually. How come some mods use a two minute chart candle um, view versus, I forget which MIC video, but it was recommended to use odd numbers. Um, again, and it's just preference, man. Personal preference. What makes you money, guys? You guys are too rigid, man. Stop being too rigid. Like, oh, I need to copy exactly what this person is doing. What percentage are you doing? You, that's not the point. The point is to learn the process, guys, because it's going to be all different. Whatever works for you, because your strategy is going to be a little bit different than another person's. Your personality is going to be a little different. You're going to hold things longer or shorter, or you're going to have different sizes. So don't be focused on the, the little minutia of shit. The difference between two-minute chart, one-minute chart, why don't you try them all and see which one works for you? Definitely. And just a quick general rule of thumb, ET617, is a one-minute chart is for scalps technically. A three-minute chart is more for confirmations to see the stuff moves clear, to see the, the death candles. That's what I like. And then a five-minute chart is for trend. And then a 15-minute chart is for super trend. That's technically what they're designed for. But when, when, when you are new, you don't know what works for you. You try them all. Have multiple charts up and see which one works best for you definitely definitely i realized a long time ago man i just could i hated a one minute chart personally and i just never want to use um even numbers because they're like multiplicative and a derivative of each other right so i only believe in the odd numbers but again man if you're making money on a two minute chart who am i to tell you stop doing that you might discover what you like just you got you to gotta play around, guys. You, you guys don't shoot enough darts. You, can, you try to copy. You guys got to find your identity, man. Everybody's different. Not everybody's made to be a swing trader or a scalper or a channel trader. You're going to find by doing. Yeah, you're really going to start liking because you, you, you do it. You identify with it. You go, I actually tried that. It's like, dude, my best friend in the world, right? 
Now, here's a funny example, right? With girls and stuff. My best friend in the world did 17 years and has never been with another woman. He married his high school sweetheart. And guess what? Every fucking FaceTime, he's like, dude, I wonder what it's like to be with another woman. I'm like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You've only used VWAP your whole life. Like, so it's like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> don't, don't learn that from Tosh. <laughs> don't learn that from me. That's a terrible habit. That's a terrible <laughs> analogy. <laughs> <laughs> a really terrible analogy but the point is man it's like you got to learn by doing what you like right <laughs> all right just try guys and, and try, the thing is when you're new to something try something you don't know how do you know you don't like shorting until you try shorting exactly. how do you know you, you yeah you don't you know just try different multiple charts something like that definitely this man. is definitely. the one profession that you can <laughs> you have an orgy of charts that no one can <laughs> get out of you <laughs> You can bang out 20 different positions if you want. <laughs> you <bang>. <laughs> exactly, bro. You could really find the curvature you love in these charts. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Sonny goes, shit, I'm getting divorced. <laughs> you know what, man? Sometimes a max day loss is good. <laughs> Risk management. <laughs> Sonny, you haven't hit enough child support yet. That's the ultimate max data loss. Oh, uh, um, let's see. Um, any more questions, guys? Hopefully you can hopefully you can hear me better. I just realized there's like this thin layer on this computer where apparently the sound comes off, and I still had this like invisible tape that I just ripped off. So hopefully you guys can hear me better. I could. This is quite a trip. This, yeah, it, okay, cool, you guys. So it'll be like this every time now. I, I, it was this fucking thing was invisible, but I just saw it randomly. Um, guys, questions? Do you have questions? Post them right now. Do you have any questions? Let's get through these. We're here to help you guys learn. Do not be shy. Be like Samuel in LA, man. This guy came up and said, "I'm here to learn," and I love that kind of personality, man. Yep, get in my fucking hot tub, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm time machine. I'm, I'm cool. There's enough dudes in that. There's <laughs> enough dudes in that. All right. But you know what, man? I, I love it. The thing is, when we went to the uh, meetup, there there must have been like 10 young guys under 20, which is Samuel and those guys, right? Yeah. And the right. rest are like well, older age. And the young kids just took it by storm. So thank you, Samuel. And thank you, all the young guns, man. All the old guys were scared. They like sidled their way over and whispered a comment. I'm like, dude, get on the mic. You're here to learn, man. Yeah, sure. she, yeah. yeah. I'm covering. Yeah, I'm making some money here. Thanks, Alex, for answering that. Um, we'll answer as well. Guys, Um, because I'll read out the question. If I short before SSR turns on, um, I can cover during SSR, right? Yes. Yes, you can. So uh, check out the videos on SSR. We have some tips on there. Yep. SSR is uh, sometimes I hit the SSR on the dot on purpose to, to, to turn it on. So be careful by shorting at the SSR level. If you, you if anything, you want to cover some there just in case it bounces right off. See guys, I, I literally just went to the, um, to the window right here. I typed in SSR. Uh, don't make the mistake I did earlier. If you have something typed right here and you click something and click search, no results will come up, but dude, SSR. Hey, guess what? We got videos on it. Boom. Tosh, do you own any trousers uh, at the meetup? You were wearing shorts in, in pretty much freezing weather. Uh, dude, I hate pants, bro. <laughs> I really do. I hate clothes in general, man. I wear the same fucking thing every day. A, a shirt, shorts, and Converse. I hate clothes. I hate them. I can't stand them. You are, so, you no. are, you are, you are a nudist, bro. <laughs> dude, are, are, I wear a robe 90% of my life, bro. If, like, I, if, I, if I was skinny and had your body, maybe I'd be the same, bro. <laughs> I absolutely hate clothes, bro. I'm robe gang, baby. Like, dude, I'll be naked if I lucky, could. Man. Lucky you. Lucky you. <laughs> I, ha I have to I have to put clothes to the shower. <laughs> Alex was dressed for like a ski trip with Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> I, I'm the only guy fully clothed in a parka in a nudist colony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, David. <laughs> this is like oh, I wish I could dress 24-7. Oh man. Samuel was rocking the skinnies. Who else, man? Like everybody had their thing, right? I was cracking up, man. Yeah, you guys are too skinny, man. Okay, I, I can't do it. Alex had the puffer jacket, man. He was going the, down the double black diamond on his snowboard, bro. He had the big old Dior on. I love it. <laughs> he came from New Jersey. He's cold, yeah, man. I know. People ask me, they're like, Tosh, are you cold? I'm like, dude, I live in Arizona, bro. I'm used to all dude, I, I, the only reason I dressed up was like, fuck. I'm, uh, there's gonna be cameras there and be all the shit. 
<laughs> and I, show, I show up, everybody looking like a dirt bag. <laughs> Val's like, I gotta look good for this shit because if George snaps a good photo, I'll put this on my Bumble profile. <laughs> Seriously, so I'm like, shit. Oh man, we're just ourselves, man. I dress the same way every day. I think Val does too, unless he feels like there's a photo op. And so does Alex. Like, you got your style. You got, your... dude. It's it's no different from what you like trading. My my dress style is exactly like I like my charts. It's simple and bare. Like it's you know what I mean. Here. You gotta you gotta do what you, what feels comfortable, man. I thought it was so cool how you're actually the same in person as you are in the webinars and in chat. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> was that me or Val? <laughs> That's funny, man. I know people, people think when they meet us, like we're different people. I'm like, dude, the guy that you are hearing right now is exactly who you're going to meet in person. Uh, let's see. Any questions? Oh, uh, question. Solomon, what's up, buddy? What was the small cap market like before March, 2020? Dead slow, <laughs> or is this just a cycle? March um, 2020. Uh, That's pretty specific. <laughs> It's very specific. No, dude, it's it's been on fire forever, man. It really has. The only time it's ever been slow in my trading career, and I'll never forget it because I almost shit my pants thinking there was never going to be a small cap again, was when Brexit ran. And Alex, if I'm not mistaken, what was that, seven, six years ago near the Dries days? Dude, Brexit happened, and I couldn't find a small cap to move for three months, dude. And I was like, great, now I got to go back to construction work. Like, dude, it was crazy. There was nothing moving. Um, and outside of that before covid when everybody you know established like hey we're gonna bring all these new people in the market and throw money in summers used to be so freaking slow dude we'd have to pile drive we'd walk all over each other for one play now summers are actually quite active compared to four or five years ago so dude I i'm telling you right now man you guys are spoiled these days dude you don't know what it was like like back in the day this is a lot of fucking action so the what happened was uh, the the market's pretty damn slow, and we thought we we're pretty dead until pandemic happened. Then when the pandemic happened, dude, the volume went off the off went bonkers because people were at home trading. Yep. And what's so, so cool about that is like now, now, dude, every seventeen, thank God, because it's going to give us volatility. Every seventeen year old kid has a Robin Hood. And a chance to, now they know how to invest in the market. And a lot of people who are stuck at home, I know that part of life sucked, but people learn the market. Now there's all this money. That, and, and once you kind of see how the market works and the, and the efficiency of it, they're in it, dude. They're intrigued. Like a lot of money's here to stay. I think it's really cool, man. It was a huge opportunity for people to really understand the markets and the convenience. And thank God for things like Robin Hood. They made it so even a 16-year-old could understand it. And now they'll probably, you know, gravitate and mature a little bit and be like, okay, now, well, they, now they lost all their money back. <laughs> yeah, they mortgaged the house on freaking AMC, but um, that's what it is, man. Yeah, man, you guys got to still be educated. But the, the beautiful thing is, people are introduced to the market in such a heavy fashion. I think a lot of that volume that came in is here to stay because people realize what this vehicle is. It's unbelievable. It's extraordinary. Where the fuck else can you click buttons and make an easy $300 a day, dude? I'm sorry. Where can you do that outside of the markets, dude? Yeah, you tell Tosh. You could you be a nutless <laughs> monkey and do it. <laughs> you go, girl. The passion is here, baby. <laughs> Holy shit, man. You guys should have seen us in person, dude. It was funny, man. We were, we were too passionate. We are fighting over each other for that microphone. Did anybody set up a folder or another way for us to send pictures for the meetup. Oh, sick. Uh, Beck, and please DM Alex any photos that you have for the meetup. Um, yeah, we, need, we need to get some. Please, please. Any angles, guys, post them all. We'd love to see it, get different perspectives. You know, we have our photos that are coming, uh, but that'd be great to see member photos as well. Um, can I give you my money to trade for me until I become consistent? Peter, I'm sorry, brother. It don't work like that, man. <laughs> On a scam group? Sure, dude. You could do, hey, give us your money. We'll give you a percentage bet. Not here, dude. We teach you how to be a, like self-sufficient, buddy. <laughs> but that's hysterical, man. I hope you're half kidding, buddy. I really do. <laughs> oh, shit. Happy to answer, Salman. Definitely. Trust me, I'm pretty sure you probably could trade better than us, so... The, the, the only difference is we believe and trust the system, guys. If you guys start to believe and trust the system, it works. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, Tosh, are you buying real estate in the metaverse? Dude, Addy B, no, bro, no. And the only reason why is because 
there's 10,000 metaverses right now. And I feel like there's gonna be 10,000 more. And I, I just, I don't know, dude. It's, it's a, it's a crap shoot of crap shoots. I no, I'm not. And you guys are talking about buying fucking land in the metaverse. You don't even have a fucking apartment of your own, you know? <laughs> no, this, this dude's good. This is Addy B. He helps us a lot. This is not some random shit. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just saying in general, I'm just saying in general, guys, I see all these people buying shit on the fucking virtual reality shit when they don't, they don't have a car. They, you know, they're living in their parents' basement, but they own fucking, like, land on the metaverse. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm like, bro, man, it's like buying a fucking a, a JPEG of a fucking burger and you, you're starving. You, know, you can't fucking eat. My, my favorite photo of that was, like, the meme where, like, it's like a college kid with, like, 10,000 beers on the floor and stuff. He's like, oh, I just bought a board. He just bought, like, a land in metaverse. Have fun staying poor. And he's like, bro, you still, like, you can't even afford I mean, a yeah, that, that That's the thing that boggles the mind, man. I'm sure there's, there's lots of millionaires on the metaverse, but... You know, like shit. If that if that goes away one day, who knows? I'm I'm just an old school guy. I'm, I'm old school I'm, too. Yeah. So, guys, the first thing I do is you focus on fucking what traditionally makes money. Once the, mo- the moment you make money, you can you can then start to take that money and start dabbling in other things. Um, yeah. Right now, what makes money is trading stocks the way we teach it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And putting your money in certain vehicles, it's like Addy. I would never. Like, I just have no interest in that metaverse stuff and crypto stuff. I just really don't. Spy has proven itself for a hundred years, man. If I'm going to put my money anywhere, it's going to be here. Like, like I just, I go with, I, I'm conservative and I'm very old school by the book like that. Maybe because I'm 31, I'm not a 17 year old. I don't know. But dude, I go, I like, I, dude, Warren Buffett's number one rule. Don't lose money. Rule number two, don't fucking lose money. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know, man. Crypto can make people rich. It can make people broke there's certain vessels that make people rich Garen fucking tea. So, you know, Bao, you should tell the low hanging fruit porn star analogy again, Samuel. He didn't even tell it the first time. Yeah, I forgot which one. I have so so many porn star stories. I mean. (laughs) Dude, we had to stop in mid sentence in the crowd because there were kids. I turned around, there were kids looking at me. And the parents are like, no, Bao, no. (laughs) Dude, everybody. It's like walking into an orgy or some shit. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude the fuck? I, know, I remind me, Sammy. What, what was I talking about, <laughs> bro? The funniest moment I think I've ever had with Bow in a long time is we were at Fogo to Chow for a mod dinner, guys. Like we had our moderators and stuff. We finally got to meet some people. Like I li- literally never met oh. Claudio and stuff. Like, dude, Claudio's giving me like a fifty-minute discussion. I, I think I know what it is. It was a. Uh, <laughs> How, how to level up properly because some, some of these guys are talking about fuck advanced strategy i'm like dude it's like if you fucking fuck a first if you are a virgin and you decide to fuck a porn star for the very first time you will have traumatic sexual <laughs> traumatic ptsd for the rest of your life okay level up properly guys that's oh. why my first my first sexual experience was with another virgin none of us <laughs> knew what the fuck we were doing Dude, Dan Bilzerian's first sexual experience with, with, was with a whore. So it's just like different stories, man. Oh so it's like, you know what, man? If, if, I, if my first sexual experience was with someone's experience, I may not ever have sex again. <laughs> I, I know it's like, you know, I'm, 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 you know, everybody has some sort of insecurity, whatever the hell it may be, right? So when it comes to that kind of department, same thing with trading guys, level up properly. You guys are trying to slay the fucking dragon and all you're wearing is a loincloth, right? You need fucking proper protective gear. You need to learn how to stroke that sword correctly, man. Stroke like, the sword. I, I could give you a big old sword, but you don't know how to use a sword. You're fucking to stab yourself. Stroke the sword. <laughs> you, gotta, you must learn to stroke the sword correctly, guy. <laughs> Can I stroke the shield <laughs> instead? <laughs> Dude, I was cracking up because David Bobby, who knows David Bobby, our Wagyu specialist, bro, he is exactly in person as I thought. He messaged me on Instagram, dude. He was talking about those freaking leg extensions, three inches. Apparently, you, <laughs> dude, apparently, because like I think David Bobby said he's like five seven. And bro, he messaged me on Instagram today. He's like, bro, I'm gonna go get one of those leg extensions. The next time I see you in LA, I'll be five ten. He's five seven, is yeah. He's being generous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just i was cracking out that's the funniest shit i've ever heard level up properly guys level up slowly properly that's why that's why boxers ma guys they don't, they don't send a, a young kid out to fight mike tyson right away right oh if man Jake paul's fighting you know, retired wrestlers dude yeah so you, what you do is you beat up the easy stuff first he's like you know that's why you know i tr- i teach you guys to trade the easy stuff that's why i call it the low-hanging fruit 
I'm not telling you to go fucking climb a fucking giant great oak wood tree, redwood tree to pick the acorn on top of that fucking tree, you know? <laughs> You get the easy shit in the bottom, man. If Ben Askren was the low-hanging fruit for Jake Paul. Th- this is not a coincidence, guys. When you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. But you got to have the clear path. Like, you got to pick the right opponent. Stock selection, right? So, for Longs, the low-hanging fruit is the – to me, is, is – you know, Longs, unfortunately, right now, stocks are going down. So, what you do is that every stock is, has a bounce. So, you, you stock the first bounce. The first bounce is the, is the same as a, a parabolic move up. Every stock has to bounce. So you stock the, the support lines of stocks that bounce. But yeah, be very careful in this market, though. They, they fucking go down like ARVL and never fucking go back up. They go back down like BKKT. So it's very dangerous being along. But you know what, man? That, there are times when being along for the past 12 years it was fucking great. You could be an idiot and buy every fucking low flow that goes up. So now you're crying that you can't make money going long. So now the shorts are making money, right, guys? It goes in cycles like that. And so what happens is, you know, if you can't make money going long, why don't you learn to trade short? Paper trade, figure it out. Uh, even if you do not want to trade short, uh, knowledge of being a short seller helps you become a better long-sided trailer, trader. Uh, definitely, definitely. And guys, like, like one of the number one things we teach, right, is like don't long on day three. Like day one, day two, day, like this is the sh- this is not a good long. You should know this by the momentum drop by the third day, three day rule. Like you should know this. This is stuff that you learn at MIC. This is stuff that you learn. It's not day one. Oh, it's three thirty already. Shit, <laughs> I lost track of time. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, we only have thirty minutes, if that. Oh shit, I gotta I gotta fucking not get into traps, bro. Cut those fantasy orders, man. Yeah. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I cover this shit. Like, what time is it? Oh, fucks. Maybe it's a good time. Time time goes quick on these levers, man. Alex is about to reach to this computer, man. Get your yeah, order. I'm, I am. I am. So the three thirty rules, you know, man. Not, don't don't step yourself into strong stocks. Don't open. I'm gonna cancel all open orders right now. I did okay today for a slow ass day. I'm just gonna cover up what I got. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah look at this man look at this dumbass shit i'm in right so h so i didn't lose money this stock i'm actually only down 78 bucks on it but to me that's a loss today because i i've been on this no glue streak i was up this morning so i gave it back stupid shit like that yeah so that, that to me is a bad trade i lost track of time i'm okay with it i only have 500 shares short left thousand shares short of 378 or some shit like that. i know pal this is why i hate these charts man i was saying it's like it's like man they're just like I, they like inch up because there's just it doesn't feel like it can come down i hate these but they're tempting they're so tempting to hit i know i get it dude i get it i'm just trying to cover out and go get the hell out you know yeah dude. man it's crazy it's crazy how fast the time goes on these webinars you look up and you're like oh my god it's almost over yeah, we have fun. So we're talking about real shit. So what's up, guys? What's up, guys? Questions, questions, questions. Hit us with your questions. Val's got a lot of energy today. This is where you want to have questions. <laughs> Sometimes Val's too tired. Yeah, because I slept like freaking all week, man. Oh man, that's awesome. Remember, I, I remember my I slept on the, the Chinese New Year. <laughs> oh yeah. And I was like, fuck, dude. So that was a sign, dude. That was a fucking sign. Bell's like, Bell's like, dude, I woke up at 2 a.m. to shower because you can't be dirty for the Chinese New Year. I was like, dude, I thought dude, I, was, I was superstitious. I, I was thing. showering at 2 a.m. <laughs> I was like, that's some shit for you. I saw <laughs> Alex <laughs> online. I was like, what are you doing up, Bell? <laughs> Bell's showering. Like, <laughs> He's like, are you high? What the fuck's going on? <laughs> it's like I'm washing my ass for the New Year's, dude. You got to be clean, <laughs> baby. I'm fucking showering at 2 a.m. And then I'm, <laughs> lay, I'm laying in bed at 3 a.m. waiting for the market to open. Next to I, I overslept. <laughs> Val, I say this with love, dude. You're my absolute brother. You're a nut, dude. I love it. Every day he's got his life is some new version of a movie. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Yep, so dude, you know what? It's anxiety, guys. Anxiety levels is the killer in life, right, guys? I have so, that, do, too. so do what fucking makes you okay. If it, if, you know, superstition, is rituals and stuff is all about anxiety levels. 
bro, we're like baseball players. We're so goddamn anxiety all the time with our process and rituals. Like, dude, Al- if give Alex a blue solo cup, dude, and he will literally trick his brain to lose 50,000 that day. I'm telling you, man, we are set in our ways, bro. I'm the same way. You can't change the rituals that work, man. Superstitious as shit, dude. I'm telling you. I don't know it's what all it is. about managing anxiety. So whatever it takes, man. <laughs> Bro, I'll never forget the story where you bought a brand new $5,000 laptop. And when I first met you, you tried oh, yeah. to sell it to me because this first two <laughs> trades on it were red. <laughs> I was equally superstitious. I'm like, I'm not buying that fucking cursed laptop. <laughs> Dude, I gave it away to someone, man. Fuck it, I couldn't take it anymore. No <laughs> it was way. a cursed laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck and buys I, I, a I, so I gave it to my friend to put on eBay and a year later he goes, I can't sell for some reason. <laughs> it's like, it's like the fucking, like one of those fucking uh, Stephen King novels. Like a lemon car, dude. It's like everything about that car is just bought. <laughs> oh my God, man. You tried to sell me a freaking laptop or you had the first two red, two red trades. I'm like, I don't want that shit. You're gonna give me red trades after that. I'm gonna inherit though your red trades. <laughs> Good thing I didn't fucking lose money the first time I moved into a new new house or something. Shit. Oh my god, dude, that would have literally like gone back to Vietnam if that was the case. Dude. Like, you got to mo- bro. Have you ever like what's the worst case of superstition you've actually given into? Like, have you done that? Have you like moved? Uh, let me think. You're like I'd rather not say. <laughs> dude, I pick my my house number is very specific for a reason. Like you know. The, oh, the- I do too. Yeah, I do too. I'm, I'm big into numerology, man. I only pick eights, dude, because they're money. Yeah, I'm a lot of weird shit going on, man. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know, see how weird we are, guys? <laughs> We're just a bunch of weirdos. Tosh, whatever the moon, dude, whatever my moon shaman says, I just follow like a goddamn sheep, dude. <laughs> you would think I was following like a, like a, like a freaking farmer pump, <laughs> like a moon shaman pump. Now, do you pick the direction of your house? Dude, oh, I have a, I have one. <laughs> I have one, man. Better than the laptops. Dude, I so I bought a house and uh, the, the the I I like uh, for privacy. I put up something that blocked the front door, right? Because I like privacy. Next, thing you know, I'm like, fuck. Why am I losing money, right? And so somebody came to my house and did a feng shui thing. Said, dude, you're not supposed to block them. So I fucking demolished this whole fucking front entry of, of the house so that I can fucking like, um, uh, so it can be open. And the other thing is like money can't, you, you can't have the front door aligned with your back door because money will flow in, money flow out. So I fucking, I re So I basically tore down the wall in the backyard to move the fucking door over, shit like that. So Bro, I'm uh, superstitious shit like that. Dude, I get it. I Apparently I just heard the last week and now I keep my freaking toilet seat down. I live alone and apparently you can't have the toilet seat out because in in numerology or um uh, what what's the toilet seat. Dude, apparently money flows out of the toilet seat. I'm like the shitter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's your girlfriend, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's like her way to put the toilet seat. Down. Yeah. She goes, that's bad feng shui, bro. <laughs> Alex is like, I'm done with you guys. <laughs> Fucking feng shui. <laughs> Close your toilet seats and your accounts are gonna start exploding. Fucking <laughs> oh shit, I think we missed some questions. Okay, going back real quick. Um, Tosh, is your stop always high of day? Or does it depend on a percentage of exposure? Brother, it's almost never high of day unless I'm close to, um, so like, I'll just give you an example, right? So this is a really random example. But if I'm shorting near the lines at the top, near uh, the high of pre-market, then it will be like a high a day or a pre-market break. But what if I'm way down here and I'm just looking for a VWAP short, I might only risk to the next resistance level. So absolutely not. Be careful with that. Just because you're shorting here doesn't mean you always give it to a high a day or a pre-market break. Sometimes it's way too far. So be careful with that. It's very much dependent on the chart. Um, all right. There was that question. If I want to start learning but haven't saved enough yet to pay for a membership, what YouTube video should I watch or what is a good point to learn? So the best way to answer that, brother, is not which YouTube videos I should watch, all of the fucking videos. You go to YouTube and you say, I need to watch every single video in this library until I can afford a membership. Every single one. Oh, yeah. Watch the videos, learn. And they may, in the meantime, save. 
That's how uh, Tom, our moderator, Tom Diesel, did it, right? He yep. drove an Uber at night while he was studying and learning. And the what? Uber at night afforded him to have his trading account. Yeah, and, and dude, he watched every single video we made, man. Like, there's not so he was he, didn't he was down that. to seven hundred bucks, guys. We we made a video on that. <coughs> down to seven hundred fucking dollars. Now he's like hell a yeah. figure trader. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Work ethic, guys. Work ethic. It's not which videos. It's all of the videos. Um, the more you watch, the more uh, you know. It helps. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Edward. Love it, dude. Thanks for the support, man. I'm just coming out some crap that I was holding for a while now, so. Okay, last question on YouTube. Can you tell beforehand by looking at day one, two in pre-market if a stock is going to bounce around VWAP or pick a direction and go? So, JJ, yeah, if I can, I'll be a billionaire. I, I know. I was going to say, dude, we would have <laughs> pri private islands. The best way, um, I would say, on like here, I'll just give you an example, like on OL OLB today, buddy, is on stocks that are usually like really over VWAP, they sometimes they have a tendency to keep going, but sometimes they don't. Like the, the reason why I want to bring this up is like they're like if we knew we'd have private islands, right? Like people thought this stock would remain strong and continue going. And look, they got dumped on. And then sometimes something's where we're VWAP and it blasts up. So you know so play by the play by his percentages. This is why I scale in and I scale out because I don't know. So I take some before, I take some after. But if you have a higher higher conviction rate of what it's going to do, then you don't need to scale like I do. I don't. I'm a nervous wreck. I like to take some early. I take some later. Yeah, scaling. There's just no way to know exactly where to get into. Seriously. And if you do, then you then it's pre-planned and you cut it if you're wrong. But there's no way to be like, oh, it's only going here and it has the potential to go here. I'm going to be a billionaire because you would be. You'd never be wrong. <laughs> but this is where pre-planning always comes back into place. <laughs> What's this? How women exaggerate what happens to them when men leave the toilet seat up. That's apparently what happens to money. <laughs> Guys, any closing questions? We have 20 minutes, but we'll probably wrap up a little bit before the close. These are great questions, eh, man. We've covered Here, let me update you on the small account challenge thing. Oh, yeah. Bell has his... Um, relatively small account challenge, right? Guys, we don't do that bullshit where it's like, two, what can I turn $2,000 into? That's just a marketing scheme. But Bao did a PDT account. What can I turn $25,000 into trading relatively small what the average trader would trade? Look so it's at. pretty slow and this account, I played it safe pretty much. Made $1,500. So I'm pretty much doubled the count, not going to win. Bao, and when's the last time we talked about this? Two weeks ago? Dude, this is sick. Maybe three at the most? The, the thing is, the past week, I barely made any money, like 900 bucks, 700 bucks, but it all added up. Yeah. Like, I, I, I had no losing trade, no, no losing days, knock on wood. I didn't, I didn't attack the big, I didn't trade KSCP, I didn't trade DWAC, I didn't trade any of those risky stocks. And what's cool is like, if this was Bao's normal account, not, not like this experiment, experimental account, he'd wire out because look at where the money is. You don't need 50 K in the account, like wire out, bring it yeah. back. Bring I, it back I, I, I might wire, I might wire back out to like 35 or something. Just Definitely. so that, you know, like who, know, who the hell knows. Right. Definitely. Um, I, I don't like seeing that money in there because mentally it gives me a cushion and I hate those cushion games, but who knows? I'll leave it in there as long as I, I can. But uh, notice, like, this is only traded a month on this account and doubled the account. So at this rate, if, if, I, if I just made 20 grand a month, it's a great fucking, it's a great year for the $25,000 account to, to make that every month, right? Knock on wood. Dude, it's the year of the ox, right? No, it's your and year. I'm, and, I, and, and I'm telling you, this, I did this as a realistic thing to show you. I have another account I trade too, but, but this account, you know, you can look at it as like, dude, this is something that you guys can aim for. This is something realistic. So he, he did this account, guys, to show you that it's really more your fear holding you back in, than anything. Because, dude, he very simply turned a twenty-five thousand dollars account double in one month using actually really relatively small size. I don't compound. My, this is not a compounding account. I'm not one of those guys that's going to fucking try to make a million dollars off this account. I want to do this as an educational thing to show you that you know realistically you can make a great supplemental income living off of this yep hell yeah so, so take a look at this if you're just making 200 a day it's 50 grand a year dude who wouldn't want fifty thousand dollars a year so at my rate this is gonna make hopefully 250 a year knock on wood dude well take let's it. see what it is right i mean for twenty-five thousand dollars to 250 I mean, it's very realistic i'm not here to make money i'm not here to risk i am taking a look at from a standpoint of a normal guy working nine to five 
that has an extra 30 grand that he wants to, to learn to trade? And how can he grow that, that 30, 25 grand, right? Definitely. No, there's this, actually- This is not me trading. This is not me trading a $30,000 account where I'm going to be aggressively trading knowing that I have a bunch of bankroll in the background. This is me trying to put myself in, a, in, in you, your, your footsteps. Now, someone asked, how much money are you risking per trade on the small account challenge? Oh, dude, I am. Fuck, man. Let me show you. Look, look, look at this. This count is like peanuts. I'm not even trading much. I, I'm being very careful with this count. That's extreme peanuts for you, man. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, when the opportunity comes, I'll hit it harder when it doesn't. So this is a small count. This is the count that here, let me, let me show everything. See what I was saying, Edward, how, how Bal is super comfortable with trading multiple positions at once. A, a new trader cannot do what he just posted. Like you have to build up to that. You have to get used to handling so many positions in a single day, in a single day. So there's not much money, but it adds up. When there's an opportunity, there's not many opportunity, right guys? So with an opportunity, I can, I can size up more, but right now it's just, I'm just doing like, 500 share bullets dude definitely definitely and look it at the results up, I mean, one month this is i mean dude this is more money than i made like i mean you imagine you make a thousand bucks a day that's a fucking great job but this is supplemental income love it i love it man um hi balantosh can i have your input on a trade since olb kept making pre-market highs, low flow, five times flow rotation by the open with a catalyst. I was looking for a dip to get, get out at the opening, risking those lows for a bounce toward um, high of day. So we'll pull up his chart and we'll pull, oh, and we're already on uh, OLB. Notice I have a three minute chart guys. So it might look a little different than this one, but uh, this is a one minute, but yes, yes. It looks like uh, about right here. Uh, I'd have to link it up with a one. I don't have a one, but um, now do you wanna go first? What was the question? I'm oh, sorry. let me um, um, let me um my position here. since OLB kept making pre market highs, uh, with with whether it's low float, float rotation by the open with a catalyst, I was looking for a dip out of the open, risking lows for a first bounce. So it's basically us critiquing. He bought on a dip, but then took a loss on it. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, some of the some of this shit doesn't work out. So this is my OLB trade, dude. I, I was literally just gonna say the same thing, man. It's like not every dip is gonna work. So I'm short this shit, and then I fucked up. You know, what I mean, shit like this. All right, so. this one. No, there's not. I mean, some of these plays is just too fucking hard, dude. Yeah, like this was this was a this loss was, on the short side. Was, like that was a loss is, on the long side. This was flat most of the day. You had to guess a direction, and I'm like, it's fine. I don't need to make money on every single stock I trade. But 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 like I like I can't hate your thinking, brother. I mean, th this was a pretty big stuff at highs. So like I don't love the dip that you bought. But again, I mean, you bought pretty much at VWAP. If we go back to the chart, I think so. You bought a little over VWAP, but you bought on a major dip on technically a strong stock that wasn't total backside yet. So what can you do? You can put a hard stop, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You're not going to win every trade. You know. Sounds like a good plan, but day one gappers have been getting crushed lately. It is what it is. And that's the other thing, guys, is the market is cyclical. So like if you do see everything getting crushed and, even, and like maybe know that, you know, that is something to take note. You know, I'm not super bullish on the long side when things are getting crushed and I'm not super bullish on the short side. When Bao was saying, like he said at the meetup, dude, Bao, what was that like one month time frame where if you shorted, you were dead. I totally forgot. You you mentioned it. You talked yeah, about that was the low, low float period where everyone was fucking making a ton of money by pumping every low floater and just went yeah up. you know so it's like that was, oh, a, that was that was a period that every uh, level two got lagged because there's so much volume in amc and all that kind of shit and so anything that fucking anybody that fucking pumped shit went up so during that time uh, you notice i went long a lot during that time because i was like fuck man I, I'm, I'm gonna prevent myself and kill myself from going short by going long so yeah, I, I, I I went long. There's a lot of times, remember a deviation from WeWop? I talked about that a lot. A lot of those stocks trapped. And so I went long. I made money during when people were blowing up, going short. So you have to understand, like, sometimes it's good for short, sometimes good for long. Dude, and that lasted a month, bro. So, like, sometimes you don't know how long the cycles are going to last. But if you notice the trend, just be a little bit more on edge, you know? And specifically during that month, you have to be a lot more on edge. I mean, dude, me and Alex were looking at each other like, bro, maybe don't short for a month. Like, it was crazy, bro. It was really crazy. But there also are times where, like uh, Travers just said, day one gappers have been getting a little bit crushed lately. Take note of that. 
just take note of that and be maybe a little less aggressive or maybe even look for a better entry. You know what I mean? But again, pre-plan everything, set your risk, and that's the best we can do. It's the best we can do. You're not going to win every trade. I'm glad that was helpful, man. I, I think we I think we discussed that as best we could. Um, let's see. So that was that question. I think, let's see. Tosh, in your trading room, uh, do Alex bow and you keep updating about what you guys are trading? Dude, I'm telling you, like, look at the main trading chat, man. Seriously, like, all you have to do is scroll through this, guys. This is the whole open. Like, this is the whole market day, right? Like, you'll see scans. You'll see watch lists. You'll see charts. You'll see commentary. Like, like, dude, we're not a one-man show that, like, if Bao doesn't show up, there's nobody else. Guys, we have moderators. We have the three of us to help. Like, like com Bao's commenting all day. Like, in the morning, we're going, like, dude, I'm telling you, man, it's a hands-on group. Yeah, Salmon, I think you'll really like MIC, man. I'm telling you. Like, we don't phone this shit in, dude. We really don't phone it in. And even on the back end, even on the customer service side, we try to do our best. Like, in, as a company as a whole, man, we put together all of these resources so you guys have a very seamless experience. You know? Obviously, there's rules. Like, you know, be respectful and make it keep a business in the main trading chat, you know, each day. And then maybe goof around in after hours. But, I mean, outside of a few rules, you know, it's for the members. As Bao chokes on the Subway sandwich. You're right over there, buddy. No, dude, I, I, I know Samuel probably knows this. Dude, I was dying at how much pizza you're eating at the meetup. I didn't know someone could eat that much pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating so no one fucking talks to me. Leave me alone. <laughs> dude, we, we were literally giving presentations and talking about leans over to me. He goes, man, I want some of that pizza. <laughs> like, he couldn't even wait until we stopped talking. I, dude, I'm just trying to get people to talk to each other, trying to people share stories. I don't want people to line up and just talk to me only. So I'm thinking it did well, you know, force people out of their Definitely. shell. Because, uh, yeah. you know, people are shy, you know. So, trust me, we're all the same. Definitely, man. Now I got one word for you, ivermectin. Hey, yeah, if you want. I don't know if there was a pick without Val with food in his hands. <laughs> Seriously, man. That's so funny. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it, man. A uh, couple more minutes, guys. Literally, last-minute question. We only have 10 minutes left. Um, can we get a quick chat about how we define a stock is trading – uh, thick versus thin. What are the main factors to identify and implications? Dude, that's awesome. I didn't see this pick. Oh, that's awesome. This is the young group, dude. This is the young crowd right here. Jay Trego, we got the twins. Dude, this is crazy. <laughs> Alex was going skiing or snowboarding, man. Got the puffer out. I love that jacket. <laughs> I'm dressed like I'm freaking going to Miami. <laughs> And Val's dressed like he's ready to go on a Tinder date. We were dressed so different, all three of us. Um, oh, shit. Where were we? Um, Val, do you want to talk about that? Uh, stock trading thick versus thin? <laughs> Pizza. Thick versus thin? What are you about? Well, uh, a quick chat on how we define um, when a stock is trading thick versus thin. Um, what are the main factors? The main factor is volume, man. Like, is it skipping up? Is it, you know, launching? Uh, the, the, the thing is thick and thin. Like, I, why would you even ask that? Who, uh, well, it's very obvious, right? If, if the number of volume going through, but the stock is moving a penny to penny, that's thick. It's thick as hell. If, 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 if a few shares spikes up huge, then you know it's thin. Definitely. Yeah. You just tell, teleporting up, skipping up on air. Very so, so the float, should indicate that but sometimes it does not just like mdjh mdj supposedly has a million but dude ten thousand shares barely budget in the morning yep yep so you 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 can tell man mostly with the volume and um and don't rush in right like don't rush into a stock that's trading very thin because you guys might get obliterated in two candles it might teleport and then teleport again and then circuit breaker hold and then teleport again you guys don't know right so i mean look it's not it's not a bad question but, but it's a simple question. You know, you can really tell based on just the volume, but also it's something to really pay attention to, right? Like, it's, a rate, it's a rate of change of the stock. Rate of change of the price of the stock. Definitely. The acceleration, if you want to fucking... Yeah, that. acceleration is really the correct term, I'm sure. Thick and thin is really... That's actually coined by another chat room that just lasted the test of time. It's really just what's the acceleration and the potential in range on the price movement. Like, that's really what it is. It's acceleration. I love that. And price potential. Um, we think about, I, I mean, we might have a question for. <laughs> this is how you know if it's thick. <laughs> Still to this day, I think that's the best Trump meme there is. <laughs> or gift. All right, I'm down at DWAC. 
<laughs> D Wack, you, tra- you trading D Wack? <laughs> yeah, baby. I'm fucking yeah. I'm the king, dude. This shit. I small shares for fucking Ron. You're a nut, dude. I love it. Nice, nice. Hit it right here. Not on the educational account. <laughs> Too risky. <laughs> Seriously. Val, you guys stick with your low hangers. Yep. The slow, the, the, the educational account gets the easy low hanging fruit plays, guys. That's how I'm building this account. I'm avoiding the risky plays. Tony, we'll make this the last question. Um, how, how come sometimes low floats move super thick and larger floats can skip through prices? Is it because the float values are used are I'm using are inaccurate. That's very possible. A Dude, there's, of- there's more. If you think that they have to report their real float, you're you're joking yourself. If you think yeah. that they have to report their real dilution, you're joking yourself. They can hide shares, you know. So don't you, you guys don't. If you take a look at the girl, they're wearing makeup. You think the girl looks like that in real life without makeup on? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, seriously. Her. Dude, I can't tell you how many times over the years, man. Literally, don't like, don't dude, be dude. Dude, Val, you're right, man. How many times over the years did we trade a stock and you, me, or Alex lost or some of Maz lost and we go back and we're like, oh my God, dude, it was a 2 million flow. I thought it was 9 million. Like, dude, it happens. It or, happens. My, or or today, Alex went long on MDJH because it's like 1 million shares and there's no dilution in the filings. And look what happened. Boom, locked down all day. Get Someone crazy. is diluting this. Someone's diluting this while you know it. There's yep. many ways to hide this shit. You know, uh, they don't have to report these things. They can report it later. They can hide it in so many different ways. And and this is why, guys, this is why, because you don't always have all the facts or maybe you even have wrong facts, this is why you use a freaking stop. Because if you don't use a stop, you're going on bias. You're going on, oh, dude, it's guaranteed a 3 million float because fucking FinBiz said so, and I'm convicted. No, dude, it might be half a million float. Like, you got to have your stops, guys. Please. You get, the way I base it on the float, guys, how thick the stock trade 